Geez, I really hate these lectures. They're so boring I can hardly stay awake. Well, they're not the most exciting thing in the world, but we've had to learn this stuff. Well, you'd think they could spice it up a little bit, you know, make it a little more interesting. You have to do that for yourself. What do you mean? You have to use your imagination and think of something interesting enough to listen to rather than boring wait a Shh. There he is. Tonight, I want to explain to you everything there is to know about body belts and safety straps. The history of the body belt is very long, but very interesting. In a small town a long time ago, a man was sitting alone in his... and think of something interesting enough to listen to and that's how this body belt and safety strap came to be now I'd like to give you a demonstration of how to correctly wear a body belt the safety strap should always be on the left side of the body and it should rest right at the bottom of your hips. It should fit tight, but not too snug as to be uncomfortable. The D-rings should be right at the hip bones. Next, I would like to give you a description of the body belt. The D and E body belt has a six-ply neoprene impregnated nylon fabric strap and buckle section. This is permanently riveted to a four and a half inch three ply neoprene impregnated nylon backing, which incorporates two standard D rings. The six ply strap has adequate strength to permit the wearer to be secured with the safety strap attached to only one D ring. Leather tool loops, a wrench keeper, a tape thong, and accommodations for a combination holster are also provided. The D and E body belts are available as a right or left belt in sizes from 18 to 28 inches. The D safety strap is a six ply neoprene impregnated nylon fabric strap. It is available in only one size. It is adjustable from 36 to 61 and a half inches. Each employee, when receiving a body belt or safety strap, and each day prior to use, must inspect it for evidence of wear or any defect which would be caused to remove it from service. Employees should be responsible for verifying that these devices are in good condition. A faulty body belt could cause some nasty damages to certain parts of your body. Body belts and safety straps need to be inspected each quarter by a supervisor and they must ensure themselves that craft employees perform visual daily inspections. You can do this by looking for badly worn or broken reinforcement plates which hold the D-ring. If the D-ring is able to rotate to the rear of the body belt more than 90 degrees, then the plate is damaged. The condition of the loop at the D-ring reinforcement plates should be examined. It could be worn or sufficiently crushed to affect its strength. Exposure of contrasting colored marker in a fabric belt is cause for rejection. Check for loose or broken rivets, particularly those in the loops holding the D-ring. 
broken or rotted threads in the stitching, and cracks or cuts that might cause a tear or affect the strength of the belt. Also look for a broken or defective buckle, or a belt that has been exposed to excess heat, burn marks, hard spots, etc. Exposed rivets on the inside also deserve attention. When visually inspecting a safety strap, look for broken, cut, torn outer fibers, nicks, punctures, or charred spots, etc. that would affect the strength of the strap. The edges of the strap should be inspected carefully. Check for worn fabric as indicated by the colored marker when three outer layers of fabric are worn through. The strap should be removed from service as soon as the contrasting colored marker becomes visible. Notice any loose, broken, or missing rivets, or rivets with excessive wear, as well as a broken or badly worn steel guard on the end of the safety strap. Inspect for a defective buckle, binding, or poor action of the keeper on the snap hook. The keeper should work freely without excessive side play and close securely under the spring tension. Check for any elongation in the metal at the rivet holding the keeper in place. I would like to make it clear that safety straps should be used on poles when making a position change or on a leaning pole, but in most cases are not beneficial to actual climbing. And a safety strap should never be used as a means of riding suspension strand. As a matter of fact, I have a list of nevers and don'ts you should take note of. For instance, never punch extra holes in the tongue of a body belt or safety strap. If a belt does not fit properly, replace it with one of a correct size. Never add any foreign attachment to the body belt, nor carry tools or materials in the D-ring or added foreign attachment. This could prevent proper engagement of the snap hooks or give a false indication of a snap hook engagement. While wearing a safety strap that is not in use, both ends of the strap should be snapped into the same D-ring. The care should be exercised to see that the safety strap does not catch on steps and other attachments. Do not store them in a locker, a box, tool case, or other container until it has been completely dried by wiping and ventilation. Never store with unprotected edged tools. When stored in the same compartment, edge tools, such as climbers, must be properly protected. Well, this concludes this week's lesson. Next week, we'll talk extensively about the social ramifications of bonding and grounding. So, we'll see you all here next week for that. <laughs>